Hello everyone. I've previously shared my opinion about whether Gulen is behind the coup attempt that took place on 15th of July in Turkey. Well, you can find the link below. Now, I will discuss five evidences that, that have emerged recently about that connection. First, let me highlight five points to clarify the context in Turkey. Number one, there is a state of emergency which overrules the Turkish constitution at the moment, and even the European Human Rights Court. And the second point is that most confessions may not be reliable, as Amnesty International has reported that there is credible evidence of torture and even rape uh, under co custody. The third is the Freedom House considers Turkey as not free in terms of uh, press freedom. So everything we learn from Turkish media is mostly filtered and biased. And fourth, the judicial independence is severely threatened. Over 3,000 judges and prosecutors have been sacked. Some of them were arrested and their belongings were confiscated. So if you were a judge in that condition, it would intimidate you. And finally, it's been a month and we still don't know basic answers to fundamental questions about the coup. Who gave the order, to, who gave the order for the coup? What was their plan if they succeeded? Where, when and how was the coup planned? We don't know any of this. So, what was the evidence then that links Gulen or Hizmet movement to the infamous coup attempt? Let's see, the first evidence that come up is the Chief of Staff General Akar claimed that one coupist wanted to put him on the phone with Gulen. But the coupist in question denies this. Well, I want to raise five points about Akar's statements. One, Akar's statement is uh, contradicted with, by three other people in the room. Two, remember Akar is a hardcore Kemalist and so he has the motive to follow Erdogan's narrative and put, the, put blame on Gulen. Three, Akar's own involvement in the coup is unclear. Four, the coup is, would know that any phone call would be intercepted by foreign intelligence agencies, so it doesn't make sense to me. Five, the coup is, might be covering their tracks by misdirecting it to, let's say, a convenient scapegoat, which is Gulen in this case. The second evidence is Levan Tukan's confession. He's, he's the aide for chief of staff and he claims that he got orders from Gulenis. However, this so-called confession was served with, uh, to media with a picture that shows sign of torture. In that statement, he also claims that I have written this with my handwriting. Well, I find it hard to believe. If I were him, under, under dead skirt circumstances, I would probably confess to the Kennedy assassinations as well. The third evidence is that three police officers who claimed to be Gulenis were caught during the coup. Mitat Ayranji was one of them. He denied any connection to Gulen and said, I was trying to stop the coup. Mitat was sacked from his job a year ago with the allegations of having a link to Gulen. But the court decided that allegations were baseless and he should be reinstated in his position. But this never happened. The next thing we know is he took part in the coup attempt. Does this mean he was a Gulenist or he was under instructions from Gulen or he was just a resentful man? Uh, if it was a Gulenist move, it begs the question though, why did the other sacked police did not take part in the coup attempt? A point to note here though, 4,000 police officers who worked in the strategic positions such as intelligence unit counter-terrorism unit, organized crime and, and financial crime units have been purged with abstract allegations recently. The allegations were questionable, but they served their purpose. There hasn't been a single corruption case since 2013 in Turkey. The fourth evidence is that there, there, there are three engineers who took part in the coup having worked in Gulen-inspired institutions previously. However, it is not clear whether they took part willingly or under the rest. We don't know how many other engineers were involved with other affiliations either. The fifth evidence is a theology professor, Adil Oksus. He was arrested in a village near the Akanji Air Base, and the, the claim is that he is the link between the army and Gulen. However, he said in the, his statement that the, he was there to buy a land in, in the village. He was released after his initial statement. Now there is a warrant for his arrest. Is he the conduit between Gulen and the coupists, as it's claimed by the media or not? I don't know. But as a conclusion, I still think it wasn't Gulen or his supporters uh, who was behind the coup. Otherwise, we would have seen many more Gulenists taking part in the coup attempt. But that is not the case. 
Only 1.5% of the army took part in the coup attempt, but 45% of the generals, mostly pro-NATO generals, were dismissed and most of them were arrested. Very few of the coupies stated their affili any affiliation with Gulen, and in fact, most confessed to having other secular Kemalist affiliations. All the important questions still remain unclear, but pro-government media is constantly rubbing the same few confessions in our face for a reason. I think we can only learn the truth about this plot by an international investigation, with the help of world intelligence agencies, maybe. At least that is my opinion. Thank you very much for listening.